In this video, I'll be solving linear programming problem using the graphical method. In my last video also, we have taken some question in the, on the graphical solutions and we have discussed the first two cases. When we are solving a linear programming problem, we can find a unique solution. When the region is bounded, it is possible that one of the corner point gives us the best optimal value. And in the second case, it was also possible that there are two solution or alternate solution in the bounded region. And if we get the two alternate solution, then the line segment joining these two optimal points. Say for example, here are the optimal solution. Then the line joining this segment x1 and x2, this will also give me the optimal solution. And hence we say there are infinite solution existing. Now in this current video, I'll be considering the three cases, the remaining three cases. Unbounded region, LPP unbounded. Fourth case, unbounded region, LPP bounded. And the fifth case, infeasible solution, no solution. Now let us take one by one in the form of the example and we understand what are these situation unbounded region and in this case LPP unbounded or bounded. Now consider this problem and now we are going to solve this linear programming problem with a graphical method and as usual I am going to first draw the constraint. So let's take x1 axis and x2 axis and let's draw the first constraint. In that first constraint if I take x1 equal to 0 x2 value is 3 so this value is 0 comma 3. And this is the origin point 0, 0. And when x2 is 0, x1 will take 3 by 2. So this value is somewhere over here, 3 comma 0. Join these two point. I get this line. Now let's identify the region. This So greater than, that means this is the region. Upward is the region. Similarly, draw the second constraint. x1 minus x2 greater than or equal to 0. So or I may say x1 minus x2 equal to 0. Which is just the straight line that passes through the origin. So this is the constraint number 2 and here again I need to identify which is the uh, region because it is greater than so the lower side of the region. If you cannot identify from here you can even take a point on either system either on this side or on this side. Say for example I take a point here that is 5 comma 0 and I substitute now in the second constraint because x1 is 5 and x2 is 0 and my constraint is x1 minus x2 greater than or equal to 0. So this is 5 minus 0 should be greater than equal to 0 which is true. So if it is true this side is the current uh, relevant region corresponding to the second constraint. Now the intersection of these two lines is 1 1 and this corner point we already know 3 by 2 comma 0 and then we have non-negative restriction. So x1 is uh, greater than equal to 0 and also because x2 is greater than equal to 0 but because of this line the relevant region is this one which is common to all constraint. So the relevant region is this one. This is the relevant region. But we see that this region is open from one side. It is not bounded. And hence we cannot directly say that the optimal solution exists at the corner point. These are the two corner point. The conclusion hold true only when the region is bounded. We say that one of the corner point will give us the best solution. But here in this case my region is unbounded. So x1, x2 are increasing indefinitely. And let us see objective function line also z is 6x1 plus x2. I've already explained this point in the last video but let's see it again here. Put this equal to constant. Say for example we take x1 plus x2 equal to 0 or I may take 6x1 plus x2 equal to 6 or I may take 6x1 plus x2 equal to 12. You may take any constant value. Suppose in this first case it is 0. So this means it will pass through the 0 0. This is a line which passes through 0 0. And if I look at the second constraint to identify which are the two points so that I know the direction of the line also. If x1 is a 0, x2 is 6. So this is a point somewhere over here, 0, 6. And if x2 is 0, x1 value is 1. So this point is here, 1. Now if I join these two points, I get the line as this. And we can see now this is the parallel line which was passing through the 0, 0 also. So now these are the red line that are the objective function line. And these are the parallel line depending upon the value of the constant we choose. So we can see here when it is 0, this is the lowest value of z and in the region this point will give us the least value and as the line moves toward this one, the objective function value will increase because the z is taking some more value of the constant and as the line reaches here, it will within the region, it will get us some different value. So we see here z is not bounded. z is also increasing. So this is the direction of increase of z direction of increase of z and hence because the direction of increase of z is also not bounded so we conclude 
that yes it is unbounded region we can see that region is not bounded it is open so this is one conclusion in that unbounded region we got that a z value is also not bounded so we can conclude that it is an unbounded solution and here when i say solution this means z is also taking value till infinity and x1 x2 also both approaching to infinite now considering another problem start the question again draw the x axis and y axis so to find the solution drawing x1 x2 axis and let me to draw the first constraint first constraint says x1 minus x2 greater than or equal to minus 1 so when x1 is equal to 0 x2 value is 1 so this point is 0 comma 1 and when x2 is 0 x1 value is minus 1 so this value is here which is minus 1 comma 0 join these two point i get the first constraint so now we identify the region so the region is lower side we can see that 0 0 lie on one side of the region and 0 minus 0 is greater than or equal to minus 1 0 is always greater than or equal to negative number so this side is the region lower side and the second constraint is this so this touches at 4 0 and 0 comma minus 2 so let's identify which is the region and again in this case i can take the help of the point say for example on this side there is a point 3 comma 0 so if i substitute so minus 0 0.5 multiplied by 3 plus 0 should be less than or equal to minus 2 so this value is minus 3 by 2 is less than or equal to minus 2 is that okay so this will give me minus 3 by 2 plus 0 is less than or equal to minus 2 which is not right because minus 1.5 is greater than or equal to minus 2 so the region is this one and we see that although the first constraint says that the region is lower and the second is also lower the first becomes redundant because this would be the relevant region and if i extend now the x1 axis and extend this constraint number two i see that this is the relevant or the feasible region in this case so we have this as the feasible region and we see now from here that this is the unbounded region so once we identify the feasible region let's see this is the bounded or not but in this case this feasible region is unbounded and that is why in the statement i have already written unbounded region which is here unbounded region but now in this unbounded region we need to identify what is the value for z whether z is bounded or unbounded as i did in the previous example and we can see now we notice that this was the line number one that is the constraint number one and this was the constraint number two now suppose i want to now draw the objective function line which is minus x1 plus 2x2 equal to c and in this case when i have minus x1 plus 2x2 let's say this is equal to 4 so if i take x1 equal to 0 i will get x2 is equal to 2 this is one point i have got and if x2 is equal to 0 then the value for x1 is minus 4 now these two points I have already traced here minus 4 0 and 0 comma 2 and now let's joining these two points I get this straight line and we see that this straight line is parallel to this uh, constraint 2. So hold this objective function line and bring this downward and for some different value of the constant and suppose now take some other value for the objective function line say this is equal to minus 10. In this case so if I take x2 equal to 0 I will get x1 is equal to 10 and in the other case if I take x1 equal to 0 i will get x2 equal to minus 5 so now these are the two points that i can draw here and now joining these two points i get this as the objective function line and on this objective function we had the value of z as 4 here i have considered the objective function as 4 and in this line i have considered objective function line as minus 10 so you can see this is the direction of increase of z so now when I see this is the direction of increase of z, this will be in the feasible region, the objective function line will be bounded by this line. And here we can see that this would be in the feasible region, this will be bounded by this particular line, which is the constraint 2. Now suppose if you are not doing this on the graph paper, how can you check that this line is parallel to or this will overlap to the sum of the constraint or not? We can see that here. And to see why it is overlapping, look at again the objective function line. So objective function given to us is minus x1 plus 2 times x2. And I'm just now looking at this objective function in with the constraint. We have seen here that this was the objective function line which was moving parallel to the constraint number 2. And so let's look at the constraint 2 again. This is minus 0 0.5 x1 plus x2 less than or equal to minus 2. Which I can write it as minus x1 by 2 plus x2 less than or equal to minus 2 or minus x1 plus 2 times x2 just taking the LCM less than or equal to minus 4 so you now see the left and the objective function 
and the left hand side of this constraint they both are same the only difference is because when we take objective function as c in particular whenever c is minus 4 whenever c is minus 4 the objective function line which we are drawing parallel to this constraint will be exactly overlapping this line so here the z value will be minus 4 and now because this was the direction of increase of z so at this stage the z will be bounded because here the feasible region ends towards this direction although the feasible region is open in other direction it is unbounded in the other direction but this is immaterial because the direction of increase of z is in this direction so here we say that the region is unbounded but the lpp is bounded so the lpp takes the maximum value maximum of z is minus 4 because it is in the feasible region and to see how this is maximum of minus 4 either you can just look at here the objective function is always less than or equal to minus 4 it is a bound it is always less than or we can look at at any corner point on this line and we can see that only corner point that is touching to this line is this one 4 comma 0 so at this corner point also if i want to check what is z that is 2 times x2 minus x1 so this is 2 into 0 minus x1 value is 4 and has this value is minus 4 so from here also we can see the value of z is minus 4 or we can just see it from the constraint so this will give me the conclusion as lpp is bounded lpp is bounded region is unbounded and when we say that lpp is bounded of course we got the optimal value for the current uh, feasible region which is now due to these constraint and non-negative restrictions now this is the last problem of the session and as the solution already mentioned here in the problem this is going to give us infeasible solution so let's draw the constraint here take x1 x2 x's and the first constraint is x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 1 so here this point is 1 comma 0 and 0 comma 1 and the region is less than so this would be the region because x1 x2 both are non-negative we must always need to check whether the non-negative restrictions are given or not in this second constraint if i take x1 equal to 0 x2 value is 3 so this value is 0 comma 3 and when x2 is 0 the value for x1 is minus 1 comma 0 joining these two points i get this line and in this line the region is this side now you can see there is nothing common between the two constraints so no common region so when there is no common region we cannot optimize anything this is the reason why we are saying subject to constraint all constraints should be satisfied and we must have a feasible region before we optimize something if there is nothing common in between then then we say the solution or we just conclude here it as infeasible solution and if we have infeasible solution or we may consider this as no solution so infeasible solution comes when there is no common region so there is no common region so we conclude simply infeasible solution and hence this was the last case of the graphical uh, method when we want to solve the linear programming problems